If you have a car, a property, or have even bought a trolley full of groceries, I can almost guarantee that you've bought at least some of this on credit. And while for that big ticket item like a house, you would have had to jump through many hoops, chances are you buy on credit several times a week without even blinking. In fact, every time you swipe your credit card. Booking a summer vacation? Credit. That new winter wardrobe? Credit. Getting your dream car? Credit. And if you say you never buy on credit, well, I'm not sure I believe you. Have you ever thought about the history of credit? It's more fascinating than you might think. For example, did you know that consumer credit has been around for over 5,000 years? Yes, it dates back to 3,500 BC. Credit started with the first earliest known civilization, Sumer, in southern Mesopotamia, what we now know as Iraq. The temples in Sumer were not only a place where the Sumerians believed the gods resided, but were also where all the administrative functions took place, including the banking of that time. The temples kept records of everything finance related and decided on the rules. Of course, they didn't have banknotes back then, so instead traded with barley and silver. The temple rulers had a lot of power, particularly when it came to borrowing funds to buy land for example, and they kept a record of all transactions, expecting repayment in either barley or silver. They also decided how much interest you had to pay should you not be able to pay back your debt on time. A decent rate for the trade industry, but they weren't very nice to peasants, who found themselves unable to pay for things and racking up debt. Have you ever heard of a bond servant? No? Well, it's exactly how it sounds, but worse. Not just a servant to their bonds or debts, but an actual slave. So anyone who couldn't pay off their debts had to work for nothing until they were paid up. And of course, the more debt you took on or the less money you had to repay, the more likely it was that you'd be made a bond servant by the temples. And I'm sure you've all heard the term a clean slate. This was also something that goes back to the Sumerians. You see, debt was recorded on pieces of slate, and temples could literally erase the debt by rubbing the slate clean. This normally only happened in times of military conflict, so that the peasants could fight for their government instead of working off their debts. Time for some legal trivia. Fast forward a few years to Babylon, 1800 BC. They decided it would be a good idea to create a few laws around credit, including the Code of Hammurabi a law to cap interest rates at 33.3% on a loan of grain and 20% on a loan of silver. The law even stated that should the merchant who made the loan try to raise the interest rate above this, they would forfeit both the capital and the interest, being left with nothing. A pretty good control, I'd say. The Babylonians also decided that it would be a good idea to have contracts on money lending, witnessed by an official to be deemed legal. So now it's starting to sound a bit more like credit as we know it. Some legal requirements before getting the dosh, but luckily we no longer need a witness 